hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Viktor Gamov, and I work as a solutions architect at the company called Confluent. Um, and uh, in this company, we basically develop uh, Kafka and all sorts of streaming uh, tools and platforms around this. Um, apart, apart from the thing that I'm doing, um, I need someone to fix this because I put these some awesome slides and they not fit here. So I think the, our camera guy needs to fix it very soon. Um, yeah, so I also talk to developers um, and um, doing all sorts of like developer relationship type of things. So I will be hanging out after the talk. If you want to come to talk to me, find me. Um, I do have this like Kafka sticker. And if you want to have a Kafka sticker, I do have Kafka sticker. I can share with you. So yes, and I also like a tweeting in the internet. Um, and uh, as you can see, I make things happen. Um, and uh, if you need anything in terms of uh, help with some advice and technology and, and in this field, so I will be happy to help. So if you didn't get this yet, you need to go to follow me right now. So if you have a Twitter or how many of us have Twitter? So go follow me. I need this. <laughs> I need this. Um, yeah. So I was thinking how to start this talk because pretty much people kind of know Kafka, but um, usually they think they know Kafka or they just want to use a Kafka because it's cool and you know some other people are using. Um, and uh, so I like to approach this problem with you know emphasizing the problem first, starting with why. Why we need this kind of tools to solve the problem. What kind of problem we might have with data? So essentially in the organizations, organizations are built on top of information exchange. You have a different teams, they have conversation around certain topics, um, they have some of the people will store the data from, from one system, some people want to use it. And um, usually this is built on top of idea of data exchange and data movement. However, what we have actually is uh, data stores. So the company uh, building the software, they become a you know, solely uh, proprietor of sort of knowledge. So we're going from the streams of data into the silos of data. Um, and yeah, I was drawing this on the, this night on the, um, when I was preparing. So this is pretty much what every organization, or at least some of the organization in some particular moment of time experienced. You have multiple applications. Each application has its own database and its own uh, type of technology. And uh, they need to change, exchange this information. So they start like querying directly. And after that, they may be some of the more advanced people expose some of the APIs or maybe going through the, some messaging systems, things like that. Or like data warehouses for, um, for having like long-term data, for storing data for a very long time. Um, and it actually becomes a mess, as you can see. Um, also, since, um, since like software, especially like open source software is so popular, people can start uh, try different technologies. Tracking some piece of the data becomes episode of uh, It's Always Sunny in uh, Philadelphia when you're trying to track this uh, Pepe de Silva. Um, and you're trying to figure out where to get this data. Like where to get this data? Is it like in, in our Hadoop cluster and our data lake or it's maybe in some of the uh, processing system or how I can get this? And Usually, data architect or like some software engineer might be look like um, Charlie Day's character here. Now, what what we actually want to have is um, provide the ability to exchange the data across different teams, across these different applications, and in this case, your uh, architecture becomes <laughs> less mess, right? However, there's a couple interesting uh, things that uh, needs to be pointed out here. So first of all, um, latency. Latency of uh, data distribution and how this data needs to be delivered in certain points. And um, um, usually when you have a, a web application, uh, you're expecting to see results within the seconds. Um, when you're uh, talking about some of the like batch processing systems, um, you're kind of okay with hours. Um, however, ability to stream this data and distribute data, not for storage, but also for, you know, uh, make this data available immediately, um, makes it possible through the, some of the streaming platforms. Now, um, so this is kind of different layers, and we're going to be focusing on streaming today and on the streaming platforms. In particularly, this simplified diagram. 
So what we do in the, in the, in the Confluent, um, we developing a idea that was born from the mess that you saw on the first slide. This mess is actually like real world scenario that happened with some of the founders back in the day in the LinkedIn when they were building Hadoop pipelines and they're trying to come up with ways how to ingest the data more efficiently and how to exchange the data more efficiently across different teams and across different uh, systems. And uh, so this, this uh, idea um, get, um, <laughs> this idea uh, now um, uh, uh, is a foundation for Kafka for, for streaming platform that we uh, built at, uh, at the Confluent. Now, so this is like very like conceptual, but what does it mean? What does it mean in, in general and like what is Kafka is? Boom. Franz Kafka is a, a famous uh, uh, Czech uh, writer. And uh, he, they have a similar last names so Apache Kafka and Franz Kafka have a similar last names. Anyway, three things that I want to talk to you today uh, when I will be talking about a streaming platform. Um, I, would, I will try to kind of change some of the misconceptions in terms of like how do people think about Kafka. How many people think that Kafka is a messaging system? Okay, cool, interesting. Uh, how many people uh, think Kafka is a database? How many people think that Kafka is some sort of uh, the magic uh, processing system? Or at least, at least, uh, at least not so many hands. All right, so uh, three things that I want to focus today. Pops up, uh, messaging or like a message uh, transfer, uh, storage and how we store the data and the processing. Now, let's focus on the pops up. So this is kind of very straightforward and very uh, easy to understand the concept when you have some other system that publishes the message and some other system will read this message. And for many Java developers, we know this for years when we uh, employ different tools like GMS or uh, MQP or some other messaging technologies or even some in-memory uh, technologies uh, where you need to transfer data between different services. But uh, when we're talking about uh, messaging, what's going to be our core abstraction? What's going to be talking, uh, what, what we're going to be talking um, when we're talking about messages? So for example, in database, we're talking about tables, right? In uh, Hadoop world, we're talking about files. So the Hadoop stores the data in distributed file system. So we're talking about files. So what's the core abstraction of messaging system or at least data distribution system? Any idea, any, any guess? Log. So most important thing that you need to learn today from, from this talk is that Kafka is distributed append only transactional log. Kafka is not the messaging system. Kafka is distributed log. So this is why this kind of like a concept usually uh, blurred in some people's mind, but Kafka is distributed transactional log. So let's talk about this, what log is. So from a simple, from a simple idea, log, it's a file. It's append only file where producer writes the data in the tail and the consumer reads it from the beginning of the file. This is it. This is whole fundamental concept that was based um, inside the Kafka. And not only inside the Kafka. If you think about this, many systems, like your traditional uh, relational database, it's also built on top of concept of transactional log. Your tables, your views, they restored or like they materialized from transactional log. What happens with your database if database failed and your uh, relational database management system trying to repair this data? Either it's transactional log to uh, restore this metadata. And the same concept um, may be familiar with the, some of the metric system. Actually, this concept opens very interesting uh, possibilities for usage. Um, so give me a second. So this... These possibilities allows us to this log to behave as a buffer to, to store, uh, store the data for time being when the consumer can read this. Uh, also, it allows to provide natural back pressure. So you will not overwhelm consumer with very fast producer. And um, in this case, 
consumer can read the data on its own pace. Also, it opens possibility for multiple consumers of the same data. And uh, you don't need to explicitly go and push the data to many consumers. So what's the difference between traditional messaging system, a topic in the messaging system, and a topic in Kafka? In Kafka, it's a pool. So your consumer, on its own pace, on its own configuration, depends on how many consumers in the consumer group, we're going to talk about this in a couple of slides, in its own pace or its own task that he wants to do with this data can go in and read this. And the design of the Kafka was, um, was based around the concept that you might have multiple readers of the data and the system will not be affected in terms of performance, in terms of slowing down, because it's not the push system. Okay? Another concept here is that uh, you're obviously putting some stuff there that has a value and um, it's also um, immutable data, which means that once you put the data in the log, it stays there, so it will not disappear. Um, in theory, um, in, practic uh, in, 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 in practice, you usually don't need to store it like for a very long time. However, there is a configuration that allows you to store as long as you want. Um, so this is the difference between messaging system when you see something is piling up in your queue and you start you start freaking out. Hey, so no one is consuming. There's a lot of messages there. Will we overflow our, our broker? No. And this is not the case of Kafka. Kafka was designed to you know, store the data as long as uh, you want. So when I mentioned the Kafka is also have uh, some sort of capabilities of database, then I was talking about things like consistent hashing or partitioning, right? So the terms that we will know from the NoSQL databases and this is how they, um, they're able to achieve scalability. So Kafka also distributed system. Kafka is distributed storage and the topic itself might contain uh, multiple partitions that distributed across multiple brokers. So in this particular case, I have one topic with four partitions and when I write the data, I write the data in particular partitions and how I, need, how I would know to which partition? I use this uh, very interesting formula that called, um, yeah, um, if you don't see it here, it's a hash function of the key. And after that, you do mod by number of um, number of partitions. So this is how consumer and producer know where the data is. And also cool idea about this log, you will get uh, um, strong guarantees on ordering per partition. So, for example, how it might affect you, you writing application that collects information for, for user accounts. And your user account would be your primary ID, and all stuff that happens with this account will be strictly ordered. So you can always replay the state and see what happened there. Now, so in this case, you need to provide the key. But what if there's no key? It's also not a problem. In some cases, you don't need to. Uh, need, don't need to have a key. You just need to collect some sort of like information, and maybe you, your uh, application that will consume would know how to deal with data. For example, you're providing some um, some metadata in 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 a, in a form of timestamp, for example. So key is not uh, is not your primary concern here. So you can use um, empty key. In this case, the Kafka will be uh, automatically balance the data across multiple partitions. How to read this data? So I already mentioned uh, earlier a little bit that the Kafka was designed for idea where we have multiple readers and readers will uh, not supposed to affect overall infrastructure. They will not uh, affect the performance of the system so they can consume the data. And this is gonna be distributed consumption, right? So you can um, consume data from the topic from many partitions. In this particular case, I have one consumer and this consumer will consume all partitions, right? And uh, in this case, this consumer will figure out, need to figure out how to process this data in terms of uh, do you care about order, do you care about some other fields like a timestamp, are you processing this in, in the window fashion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also, it opens um, the, the another um, possibilities for another system to, to, um, to write their own new consumer. For example, you have some application that um, Let's say everybody knows Uber, right? Um, the Uber use Kafka for data distribution in their like uh, environment. So your driver's app will post some of the updates to the Kafka topic, and you will have um, writer app that will read this from the from this topic and would know where's your driver. 
In the same time, same information can be analyzed by some of the system. For example, information on uh, driver statistics that driver will see at his, uh, his account will be consumed from, from, this, uh, from the location of the driver and it will calculate some of the running overage in terms of speed, uh, running overage in terms of um, how fast it reacts, uh, so far and so on. Right? So multiple consumers can consume same data and they might have different speed of consumption. You can have like a fast and memory processing system like Kafka Stream to process, or you can have some more complicated systems like Spark to run the um, different computation. And on the Spark, you might be running some sort of um, um, machine learning models. So you, you, will, uh, you will teach it based on the information of multiple drivers. Um, also, you can have multiple consumers per one consumer group. This is something that you're not getting from traditional messaging systems um, because the Kafka was designed to be um, mm, highly scalable. So scalability comes uh, as, a, as a first um, uh, the first class citizen here. So the consumption and the speed of consumption and scalability of consumption would be defined by number of partitions in your topic. So in this case, I might have up to four consumer and consumer groups. So in this case, I would have one consumer dedicated to particular partition. So I would get a strict order per partition in, in the consumer as well. So um, how it works in terms of failures, it's also built in in the system. The, the, the failure tolerant uh, consumption also built in idea. So if it, uh, one of the consumers will fail, meaning that the partition number three will be no, not consumed, the Kafka will rebalance this and assign the partition to one of the um, consumers. So this is very, uh, very powerful and fundamental concept. Any questions about this? Yeah, one question I have is, uh, in the data pipeline, typically you said that Spark and Kafka can work together, right? Uh, I know that Spark, when you're working in the arm, you have a data locality, like a partition, where Spark can pick up locally in the file system, in the auto system. How does it work with the partitions in the Kafka? Do they have similar setup? So you're, you're not running consumers on the same node where you're running brokers consumers your application. So think about this, um, for example, think about this as, a, as a, you're thinking about database. Database has a storage and processing or querying capabilities built in in the system. Kafka outsourced querying capabilities to the consumer, basically. Kafka only stored data. And the consumer will, uh, will, will handle this, you know, data reads. So in this case, like in case of Spark, for example, you're running on some like local nodes, but in this case, um, you will not achieve anything if you will be running consumer on the same nodes of partition. You can write some of the you know, custom uh, partitioner that can benefit from this idea, but uh, usually you know, it's more like a broad discussion why you need to do this rather than you know, how it's done in Kafka. All right. So the basically this whole picture, this is how it looks like. You have multiple producers produced to the multiple topics and uh, topics are partitioned and spread across the, um, across the cluster. Now, the, um, the consumers, also they have a multiple consumers that consume the data from the multiple topics or from the same topic, and uh, the, they can be distributed across uh, also different sorts of application. This is like a red squares uh, and the blue squares, it might be your different application. It might be a red square is your Spark application, or the, another red square is your Java application, just simply consumes. Um, so this is kind of the overall, overall idea. Now. Um, another spin-off of this idea, you need to write your consumers over and over again, or you need to write your producers over and over again to achieve this. But you don't have time or desire to do this repetitive task. So for that, to solve the problem of bringing data into Kafka or uh, uh, move data out of Kafka, uh, there is a concept of connectors and the concept of the framework, which is also uh, part of the Apache Kafka called Kafka Connect. So essentially what it does, it provides you uh, API and off-the-shelf components that you can use to bring data into Kafka to do data distribution and uh, move data out to, um, to store it somewhere. Give you an example. So we might uh, integrating with some legacy system that don't have developers to rewrite this because it was written uh, 
long time ago, or it was vendor uh, application, and the vendor is asking like big money to rewrite this and make it native to Kafka. But it uses standard technologies like a database, Oracle database. So what you can do here, you can use CDC connector that simply listens the transactional changes on the local database uh, of Oracle and push data into Kafka. So in this case, you're enabling a streaming in your legacy application. You don't introduce new changes in your application, you just do um, what Kafka does, moving your data around. Now, you open, with this use case, you open this data. You bring in this data silo that was introduced by, uh, you know, introduction of this vendor-based application or some legacy application, and you expose this data for new research. For example, you need to do some of the um, computation on, uh, like, machine learning, on um, so some analysis of, of this data, or you're trying to figure out well, what kind of data you have, like how you can correlate different data sources. Also, Kafka allows you to outsource this data to somewhere else. For example, um, you're storing some of the data for a couple weeks in Kafka, like because they need it for multiple applications. And after that, after two weeks, um, you can actually write this back to HDFS and for long time storage. And when you need this, you can also replay this from HDFS because there is a connector for HDFS that allows to bring data back. So this is actually a powerful concept. And in many cases, uh, in many, um, in, in situation uh, like as of today, there are plenty of connectors for many popular databases, messaging systems, and other, uh, including even like Twitter. Why not, right? Remember like Twitter, like you need to follow me? Uh, you don't see it here because, uh, anyway, forget about it. Uh, Brandon, a lot of the super files. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, the log files are the POSIX files. Uh, when you said that CFS, you can write it CFS, right? Yes. So what are they currently? I mean, regular loop, how do they store? Uh, you can use like a parquet, or whatever format, like you can use parquet, you can use common separate text, whatever you want. It's uh, like Avro files. Um, so it's everything is either configurable or it just requires some of the additional tweaking if like a vendor of the connector is not, um, didn't support this. Um, so also connect provides you with the um, things that you don't have to do yourself. So you don't have to um, think about the scalability. So Connect already has a built-in coordination protocol across multiple workers that run your connector. Uh, con connector takes, uh, takes care of the fault tolerance. If some of the, uh, some of the connectors will fail, the uh, data will be redistributed across multiple other uh, instances of the connector. So uh, remember when I was talking about the consumer and the way how the consumer also fault tolerant, the, the, this idea also brought to, to the connect because connect is uh, essentially based on same consumer as well. Um, you have a central management. Uh, for example, some of the you can start connector, stop connector through the REST API uh, and uh, and uh, also from different uh, different UIs available out there. Uh, we do have our own API that allow you to manage connectors, uh, start and stop, initiate connectors, and also um, allows you to do schema propagation. I'm not going to talk about this uh, today a lot, but data governance essentially is one of the big tasks in big organization. How to deal with data where you have it in Kafka or you have it in different systems and you know you have different teams that they need to um, collaborate on this data and you don't want to break um, by break some of their applications by introducing some of the changes like um, introduction of uh, serialization formats like Avro that supports data evolution and a scheme registry that allows to store uh, you know store this data um, schema data outside of the Kafka and uh, reduce uh, load to Kafka since because you, you're extracting the schema and store it somewhere else, not in Kafka. Kafka stores only bytes. Um, so for example, this is, uh, this is how, um, example of the Hadoop scene. So Kafka is distributed system, Hadoop is distributed system. Now, like if you would do uh, like a scalability, like reading and writing, like what you were gonna scale? You're gonna do a scale of Hadoop or you're gonna do scale of Kafka? Um, actually, you're scaling of connect because connect is responsible for moving data around. And uh, this is how usually the people implement this integration with other system like legacy system. It's, it's, it's kind of like a preferred way. You can always write your, your, your connector or you can write your own consumer if you think that connect uh, API is, is too opinionated. But this is, uh, it is what it is. This is available to you today. 
Um, same thing with the GDBC connector. You can use either like a polling model, you polling certain tables and uh, you're getting this data as a stream of changes that you will propagate through the Kafka. Or you can use CDC connector that actually integrates with the um, internal transactional log of database like Oracle Golden Gate or um, some, some other vendors provide their own CDC connectors. Um, plus, you can consolidate multiple tables, multiple uh, data sources in one uh, stream of changes and vice versa. Now, storage. So, a um, little bit about storage. So, first of all, uh, you already learned a little bit about that uh, the, the partition or like a log is a file that's stored on the file system somewhere. So, the Kafka is a file-based uh, system. So, Kafka stores data on file. And this is why the uh, storage is important. Uh, we use a file system as a default storage and it's optimized for, for storing some of the data. We're not doing uh, random reads and writes because it's append-only log. We're only writing to the end of the file. So that's why it's pretty fast. Now, we can have these days the terabytes per server. So it, it's kind of, disk, disk are not the problem the, these days as well. So you can store um, uh, terabytes of data per server. Now, you can multiply it by number of um, uh, servers you have in your cluster, and you can have uh, uh, this kind of joint cap uh, capacity of the, of the data. Now, uh, the systems, the, the modern distributed systems, they were designed by people who worked in the startups when the startups were poor, so they designed the systems to be run in you know, regular hardware, commodity hardware. So they don't need to use like expensive like boxes. You can, but uh, you don't have to. So that's why the systems like Kafka and some other databases uh, that, that, you know, uh, popular these days are uh, designed to run on the commodity hardware. You can run it in the virtual machines. You can run this in cloud. You can run this in containers. So this is stuff that doesn't require much but, you know, obviously, if you're putting on this more power hardware, you will get more, uh, maybe better results. Or maybe not, because there is, a, there is a benchmark that they did in LinkedIn back in the day. Uh, they were achieved uh, very, very significant numbers on running on just a three node cluster in terms of like writes. So if you Google something like uh, Kafka benchmark LinkedIn, uh, you will mostly uh, find the um, article from 2010. Uh, still, still makes sense. So some of the ideas that described in this article still make sense. And if you do, um, and if you do like benchmark of Kafka, it's a nice place to see. And as I mentioned, when you're writing to the log file, you're writing to the end of the log file. And in this case, it's not it's not going to do sick, uh, and uh, your your needle of your uh, rotational disk will not try to find this file. It will just write this in one place. And in most cases, it also go through the um, uh, the page cache, which is operating system buffer that provides you ways how this data would be written more uh, more efficiently. Now, <clears throat> also sometimes people uh, uh, heard that Kafka has a database type of durability, right? So uh, what what we like about databases? The database provides us persistence and ordering. Kafka provides us persistence and ordering uh, per partition. Uh, something that needs to be considered. However, if you want to, um, you, if if the order is must thing for you, um, there is a ways how you can do this with, with Kafka. Now, Kafka was designed to be distributed by, by default. So that's why things like replication, uh, sharding, fault tolerance, partition, and the scalability is everything that you desire on the system in 2018, right? So it's a great, a great way that you don't need to worry about how to replicate this or like buy additional, I don't know, software that will replicate this for it. Everything is built in in the system. So the Kafka has a concept of replicas. Your um, your primary partition that will store the data. Uh, your writes go to the primary partition or leader partition. Your reads go from the leader partition, and uh, your uh, replicas, your follower uh, following partitions, they will just exist for the purpose of a fault tolerance. So if one of the nodes goes down, you will not lose the data because some other nodes will have these replicas. They will be, um, will be propagated, some of the lost um, uh, partition two, for example. Partition two would be restored from the backup and would be stored from, the, uh, from other nodes. 
So this is also a very powerful concept, and this is built in, right? So it is already there. Now, in terms of processing data, so when we're going to be talking about the processing data, we're going to be talking about things called stream processing, meaning that you have this uh, stream of events, and you need to produce something, right? It looks like this pipeline. Um, and, uh, and we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Yay. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing another talk, but solely um, dedicated to stream processing thing. So I will not do an introduction to Kafka because I did this introduction today. I will focus on the some of Java APIs. Uh, Kafka Streams is awesome. That allows you to write apps, not the clusters. And the KSQL that allows you not to write Java at all. So super cool. Uh, mark your calendar. I will see you tomorrow. Now, let's summarize real quick. So we talk about um, streaming platform. Streaming platform is system that allows effortlessly exchange the data between different systems within organization. Streaming platform is a neural system of your organization for data exchange between different applications. You can consider this application that might be microservices. Can I use Kafka for data exchange between microservices? Of course you can. Um, and more importantly that not only for microservices or not for only for like a peer-to-peer -peer connection, there might be some of the data that your system uh, might require from other system. Also, how I can use Kafka if I have a legacy microservice and I don't want to share database? How many of you guys face a situation when you people talking about microservices and after that, at some point of conversation, some shared database idea comes up, right? It's, it's ridiculous. So Kafka allows you, with the Kafka Connect, it allows you integrate the systems without introducing new code. So some of the things that I see my customers do, um, they actually, you know, their teams that develop in microservices, they don't know about the existence of other systems. They know that they have a local state. For example, they're writing a web app that's collecting orders or um, you know, doing um, some of the like, user-related uh, uh, things. Now they're writing a database and have a connect that lists these changes and propagates the changes to Kafka. So other systems, for example, order fulfillment system, will listen this and will do, you know, will start the workflow. Or some analytical system that will analyze uh, how many uh, orders we processed through, uh, through the day, will collect this information from there. So these two systems, they're independent. You know, when we talk about microservices, we're not talking about shared database. So in this case, database is solely for the service. It uses for its own local persistence. And think about this. It's kind of cool, cool, um, cool way how to, um, you know, how how you can introduce this, right? How you can introduce the Kafka in in, in the organization without breaking the code? Um, some of the ideas was there. Now the. Um, in, uh, integration with the big data tools. So the ma majority of the, um, the tools for data processing, Hadoop, uh, it has um, some sort of, obviously, we can, we can sync data to, um, to GFS and uh, the Hadoop can take this and process this. Now, you can, um, you can, you can connect to different systems, not necessarily Kafka, uh, Kafka streams. You can connect to Flink, you can connect to Spark and do, uh, do processing there, right? Um, or not use any you know, tools, just write your Java applications and um, you know, do something with these messages. It's also pretty cool. Now, so second important thing, you need to go to this website and download this. Um, this uh, the open source thing is awesome. So essentially it is a, um, it's Apache Kafka. So we, uh, we're providing our own uh, distribution of Apache Kafka that includes connectors, that includes schema registry for, for managing a, um, schema, there's REST proxy that allows you not to write any code at all if you want to use the Kafka. You use a REST proxy and you use curl to push messages to Kafka and use curl to read messages from Kafka, right? So not necessarily even write a line of code. Um, plus uh, enterprise, it's, I, don't, I don't want to talk about this today. Uh, another important thing that we're hiring, so come talk to me if you're interested to work with me and take selfies uh, with me or uh, check the website if you find something interesting for you. Um, and before we go, I have one last thing that I want to share with you. So, uh, when? Um, end of January this year, we have this uh, big corporate event, like big, we're not that big, we're just over 200 people right now. Um, but I mean, like, all people came in an office and uh, we have this, like, a company kickoff of year kickoff, and um, some of our customers came in. 
So they, they, uh, they came and they talk about their, um, their journey to, um, to Kafka, to streaming platform, to talk about how they were successful or not successful. I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they talk about uh, different things. And uh, they actually shared some of the, some of the story that I, I, I think uh, I want to share it with you. So internally, they're running a lot of teams. Uh, they like onboarded many teams in, um, in Kafka and internally they're running a hackathons, internally they're running like a workshops and, and things like that. In the very beginning of, the, uh, of their journey into, into the streaming platform, um, they need to convince other teams. So there was like, they also have an internal uh, corporate event and uh, for technical people and uh, the two, two, two people um, who came to our, um, to our uh, office, they were speaking at this, um, at this event. And they were trying to talk about um, certain things and how to convince people that it's awesome. And uh, so lady told the, the guy, to Mike saying, Mike, when you're going to be talking about this to people, please do not oversold this because expectations are really high and there's like hype technology and the people want to use it. So when the Mike came in on the stage, he said that, um, okay, so there is a three breakthrough things that happened with humanity. First one was fire. So invention of fire changed significantly the way how the people live their lives. Will, invention of the will, become a significant change in the way how the people move the data in the Kafka. <laughs> so the Kafka changed the way how the people think about the data and how the data move around. So it's a significant change of the paradigm and how you think about your data. So it's not, it's not just that you have the data in your silos. You break in your silos, you change in data, you allow your organization to move faster, to be more efficient, and this is it. Um, if you have any questions, find me here. I will be here today, tomorrow. Um, we'll be doing talk about stream processing tomorrow. Uh, find me on Twitter. Um, send the pictures uh, in Twitter. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>